Hi there, I'm Jim Zirin. Welcome back to more Conversations. We can almost take it as a given that Donald Trump is not about the truth. David Frum observes in Trumpocracy, the corruption of the American Republic, no American president in history, no national political figure of any kind since at least Senator Joe McCarthy has trafficked more in, in untruths than Donald Trump. The Washington Post's fact checker keeps a running tally of Trump's lies since entering office. As of October 2018, it documented 6,420 false and misleading claims in the 649 days since he took the oath of office. That's an average of nearly 9.9 .9 false claims a day, and we may be sure that the number is steadily growing. Trump is responsible for what the Rand Corporation aptly calls truth decay in American political discourse. Truth decay Rand defines as an increase in the relative influence of opinion and personal experience over fact and declining trust in formerly respected sources of factual information. But did fake news, conspiracy theories, and factual fantasy start with Donald Trump? With us is Kurt Anderson. Kurt Anderson is a noted writer and host and co-creator of the WNYC radio show Studio 360. In his latest book, Fantasyland, How America Went Haywire, a 500-year history, he argues that untruth in American political discourse did not start with Donald Trump and will most likely not end with him either. We are delighted to welcome Kurt Anderson to this table. Now, Kurt, is your book about Donald Trump? It's not only not about Donald Trump, I was conceiving of it and mostly finished with it before Donald Trump even had the nomination. Um, it's a set, of, it's a sort of my theory of, my alternative theory of American history that I've been playing around with for a long time and writing the book for several years before Trump came along. He just appeared and became the almost mind-boggling poster boy for my entire theory of, 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 of this tradition, this deep part of the American character that is about believing the untrue and the unreal. Uh, do you believe the untrue and unreal has wounded our democracy? Well, I think the degree to which it's gotten out of control that your truth is your truth and my truth is my truth and empirical reality and uh, the, 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 the will to objectivity has, have, have gone away. And yes, among other things, it indeed has severely damaged our politics and our, and our democracy and, and, and on the verge of making uh, running a society and having a, a politics that functions impossible. Uh, but you quote uh, Jefferson in your book, who said you can believe in 20 gods as long as you don't break my legs or pick my pockets. Uh, that's kind of at odds, isn't it, with uh, your um, argument? Well, that was 230 years ago. Things have changed. It, it is. I mean, I'm, I am, in that sense, uh, a Jeffersonian. And, and, and he, he also said he could believe in no god or 20 gods. And as long as you don't pick my pocket or break my leg, it's fine with me. And, and, and that is the basis of the good laissez-faire tolerance of America. You can believe anything you want. But to that point, my argument is that a lot of these things are breaking our legs, whether it's the fantasies about uh, we don't need gun regulation of any kind or the fantasies about climate change. They, they, they harm us individually. The, the fantasy that you don't need to vaccinate your children. They are breaking our legs in all kinds of ways, and that's when it's a problem. Yeah, you can believe whatever crazy thing you want if you believe it in the privacy of your own home or your club or whatever it is. But as soon as it gets into the public sphere, that's a problem. Well, are you a, a declinist? I mean, are you really uh, observing the decline of the West as a result of fantasy? Well, I, I've never thought of myself as a declinist. And I, and I have poo-pooed and, and, and raised my eyebrows at declinist over the years. People say, oh, it's just like Rome. Oh, it's all going to hell. I have rejected that. Just temperamentally almost. As I began this book and began researching and, and, and discovered really how, how deep this goes and how bad it's gotten, I, I, I won't say I'm a declinist, because that, but I, I will say that I've never been more worried about uh, America, the American future as a result of this, this loss of trust in <laughs> A shared set of facts. But despite all the fantasy, I mean, aren't we living in an era of hope? We've accomplished so much. Uh, we uh, elected Obama president, first African-American president. We yeah. have reduced murders. We've uh, 
De there are many. There are many. Decoded the genome. You could uh, point to uh, all sorts Indeed. of advances that uh, argue against a decline. Well, yeah, and 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 as, as and I point to those and more at the end of the book to say, look, it's not all bad. We're not. It's not all disastrous. We're not entirely dysfunctional. We're, we're still this incredibly prosperous uh, country, but that isn't to say, oh, let's just we'll get over this thing and Trump will be gone, it'll be back to normal. Because I don't think it's going back to normal. As I say, I, 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 I developed, I wrote this book before there was a Trump. Trump is a symptom, he's not the cause. And so the, the, the pathology, if you will, that, that he was able to exploit and, and, and turn into the presidency uh, is, gonna, is gonna outlive him. And, and it's, it is a real problem, which is, and, and, and I think, Sooner rather than later, it, c it can affect things like our economic success. If suddenly, um, well, cl take climate change. I mean, uh, as the most recent report of the, of the Inter-Federal uh, uh, Task Force. His own administration's report. His own administration's report, which says we're, this, this is going to really put a, put a damper on GDP growth if we don't get it under control. So, so uh, in addition to it being terrifying to me that people... Are, are running wild with their fantastical beliefs in all kinds of ways, and that makes society and culture difficult to maintain as we've maintained it. I think it will and is having real material effects on our prosperity and everything else. Well, you go back to John Adams, who said facts are stubborn things, and I know you're fond of quoting uh, uh, Senator uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who yep. said you're entitled to your own opinions, but not your own facts, uh, and yet, Americans like to believe what in hell they want to believe. Right, and that, and again, fine, and and you know, difference of opinion and debate. I'm from Missouri. Show me. Yes, exactly. Um, but sometime over the last 50 years, and and now I'm old enough to have seen this change. It's changed. That 30, 40 years ago, even 25 years ago, there was still a kind of trust in the experts who deserve to be experts because they knew more than I did or you did about certain subjects. And, 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 and that changed. And, and what, what we arrived at is a place where, yeah, people are tied to their own opinions and really don't tell the, see no distinction between fact and opinion. What, their opinion is a fact. And, and, and what they don't want to believe, they don't want to believe even if, if, if the world uh, recognizes it as a truth. And again, every day the president uh, shows that no, I, I, it doesn't. I don't. I don't see that this uh, head of Saudi, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, ordered any kind of murder. No, I don't think climate change is real. The president every day is sa is saying, despite just plain evidence about subjects large and small, that he doesn't believe things. That certainly gives further permission to Americans to believe whatever they wish. Evidence be damned. But, you know, you go back to the pilgrims and you do in the book and the yeah. uh, Puritans and the Salem witch trials and spectral evidence and Cotton Mather, the end of the world. And um, Americans have been fantasizing forever. I mean, even in the 19th century, the age of hucksterism, um, P.T. Barnum, Buffalo Bill, you cover all of that. Yep. Patent medicine, snake oil salesmen. Yep. And we still in our drugstores, they sell a lot of stuff that does us no good, no harm perhaps, but no good, yeah. patent medicines. Yeah, uh, no, we, well, and, and, and what, what we had is for the tw most of the 20th century, the, the arc of, of was, well, the great arc was bending toward reasonableness and rationality in America as in the rest of the developed world. And then in the last few decades, we diverged in all kinds of ways in, 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 in allowing and believing that all kinds of uh, patent medicines and nostrums and fake elixirs work. John D. Rockefeller Sr. was a, a yes. snake oil salesman. And then his sons became r reasonable, you know, billionaire businessmen. With the and, real thing. Exactly. Uh, oil being the real thing <laughs> in that case. Uh, so th there was, there seemed to be an arc of history that, that, that's my worry, is that we, yes, we've always had hucksters, we've always had uh, the belief in the, the untrue, whether it's Hollywood's version or or, or P. T. Barnum's version, but or Madison Avenue's version or Madison Avenue's version. But when push came to shove, the 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 reasonable uh, edu experts were in control, and 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 that control was really abdicated at a certain point over the last half century. Well, do you suppose 
uh, we really went off the rails in the 1960s where people started believing in uh, relativism and there's no right and wrong, there's only relative right and wrong. Yeah. And, uh, well, right and wrong is one thing. It's the true or untrue or science is real or science is not. It's, it's that relativism as opposed to the, the moral relativism, that too, but that's a different question. I, and I'll leave that aside. It's the, no, I believe that my amulet is just as powerful as this nuclear reactor because I do. That's what started in the 60s. Yes, the 60s were a kind of wellspring of, of, you know, find your own truth, believe what you want, do your own thing. And obviously, many, many, many great things came out of the 1960s, civil rights, the beginning of environmentalism, feminism, all the rest. But also this, this, this uh, indulgence of believing the preposterous and the unreal and the untrue. And, and over time, uh, it, 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 it exponentially increased in, in the last 20 years. I think in, in our politics especially, we see the, the, where that has uh, brought us. But also the 60s uh, brought us into a drug culture where, um, you know, uh, Timothy Leary's famous statement, if you remember the 60s, you weren't there. Right. Uh, right. And so the sixties have a lot to answer for. The sixties do. The sixties exactly. The sixties do have a lot to answer for, and uh, which, of course, has been a conservative critique for since the sixties. What the, the grand irony of what what the sixties, in that in the sense we're talking about, has given us? It's empowered more than the lunacies on the left, the lunacies on the political right, um, and and uh, you know the, the the shape of that. History and its sort of tragic irony uh, is is something that uh, ha was what one of the things that fueled this book. But even uh, the elites uh, have uh, believed in fantasy. If you look at Nancy Reagan, had, had a, an astrologer uh, on retainer, and yeah. uh, Scalia said he believed in the devil. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean, what we make of all this? These are our national leaders. They are no our it, national icons. It's not a, yes, and 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 although the 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 belief in 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 fantasies and the untrue and the unprovable and the preposterous, at this point is. It is, it, is, it is on the left and the right elite as well as uneducated, but it is not symmetrically distributed, right? Unfortunately, it has become far more of a, of a, of a kind of right-wing tick and indulgence for a lot of historical reasons, and it is, it is not unconnected to education. Uh, um, and and uh, here we are. I mean, uh, where, where a certain kind of... of democracy of, of belief, of epistemology, has, has sort of spun out of control. So uh, epistemology is how do we know uh, what the world is? Right. And uh, are we now in a, have we seen a polarization of epistemology where people, rather than disagreeing about religious beliefs or political beliefs, uh, they're uh, disagreeing about facts and they are vehemently Correct. opposed to the counterfacts, which may be true or may not be true. It's true. It, it, that, that's correct. And, and so we had what, what happened in a kind of epistemological way in the 60s, and people could believe their own truths and, and, and all that that meant for good and, in my opinion, mostly for ill. And then we had the technological revolution. We had the Internet, which gave an unprecedented infrastructure for this kind of make-believe reality that I'm talking about. Suddenly, uh, before, you know, the, the, the crackpots were limited to their crummy newsletters and, 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 and privately printed books. Now, all of those crackpots and all of those false theories and beliefs have websites that full of apparent facts that look as real as the New York Times. So, with which you can interact. With which you can interact and with which you can be recruited and recruit fellow believers in, in these fantasies and falsehoods, which we've never had before. So it really is, it's, it's a, again, my book argues that we've always been this way since the beginning, 400, all, nearly 400 years of, of, of European settlers in, in, in what is now the United States. But it was in various ways under control in, and, and, and this, the, when, when the internet came along, when it did, it, 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 it became a kind of perfect storm, uh, mixing with our natu a natural character toward believing the untrue, along with what happened in the 1960s, uh, along with uh, no doubt uh, various, the, 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 the economic 
stagnation of the last 40 years, which, among other things, I think le leads people to to uh, kind of grip, have a grip on on fantastical beliefs that console or thrill or somehow sustain them. Conspiracy theories that um, uh, about Kennedy, about a deep state, about uh, yeah. almost anything. Well, and and again, another another thing that happened in the 60s, not coincidentally, as, as to the 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 the, the new agey uh, sort of wellsprings of the 1960s were conspiracy theories, starting with the assassination of, of Kennedy, um, which, and, and then shortly thereafter, some real conspiracies, like Watergate, which made people think, well, everything is a conspiracy. There are real conspiracies. Most things that you don't like or that are evil or bad aren't the result of, of conspiracies, but it became a kind of habit of mind that has gotten out of control. And uh, how uh, did this progression evolve from um, uh, the 1960s and, and era? It seemed to be uh, somehow or other consistent with the Enlightenment to Kellyanne Conway talking about the sort of alternate facts George Orwell talked about in uh, 1984. Part of it began with, with, with an extreme version of, of this good American tradition of tolerance or the you know, Thomas Jefferson saying, I don't care if you believe in 20 gods or no gods. So, oh, you, you believe this kooky, nutty thing? Okay, fine, whatever. Um, and, and, and uh, uh, of course, that should be legal, must still be legal. That's, that's our Constitution. That's, that's the First Amendment. But the, the, the kind of, in, in, in the institutions of society, academic, media, and otherwise, that used to stigmatize crazy, kooky, untrue beliefs, sort of held back and abdicated that responsibility. And, 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 uh, and then there was money to be made in, in promoting falsehoods in cable television, and not, I'm not even talking about cable news, cable t d nonfiction channels suddenly putting on documentaries about mermaids and monsters from outer space and all kinds of crazy things as though they're real. So, so there are, there's a lot of culpability to, to go around. Some of it's about religion, some of it's about, hey, I can make a buck doing this. Um, uh, it varies. Some of it's cynical, some of it's sincere, but it's all led us to a place, I think, that's uh, it's going to be hard to get out of. I think we, 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 can, we can make it not get a lot of worse if enough of us in the reality-based community come together to, to do that and plant the flag, but I, I, I don't see it uh, sort of cycling back to normal. I don't see the pendulum well, swinging back. Well, it cycles back. back. We could go back to Orson Welles and the War of the Worlds and uh, oh. the Martians are coming and people are getting out of their cars and they're, they're ducking under undercover because yes. the Martians are coming. Yes, well. I mean, or, we, we, the further back we go, the more fantasy there appears to be. Well, and if, we, if we go back all the way to the 13th, 14th century, then we're in the Dark Ages again and could happen. Could happen. <laughs> yeah. And then you have the phenomenon nostalgia, which mm. may be a fantasy in and of itself. Mm. Uh, we were talking before about uh, Brexit and the nostalgia for the British Empire, but yeah. somehow the belief that if we could take it back to where it was before, undefined, right. we'd be much better off. It was a simpler, better, uh, uh, easier, and freer life. Uh, of course, it was. All, th th we were always, it, you know, it, it, it's a, it's a, it's. it's true that we always think, oh, it was so much better in the past. It used to be so the much good better. Old that, days. That's the good old days thing. And but nostalgia itself, nostalgia was a was an actual illness before it was a, a thing we all occasionally feel, a fondness for the past. And it was a, it I mean, was it's a, like hysteria. It was. It was hysteria over like soldiers who were too long away from home. Then it became a, a thing actual people felt about an actual past they had experienced. And then in the last century or so it has become a, 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 a story that somebody believes about a place and a time they've never been, but they're still nostalgic for it. So, and, and I think that that kind of back, that fond, sad, backward looking quality, and again, we're all nostalgic for things, but, but you, you can go overboard. And I think we've gone overboard in, in imagining that, oh, everything was so much better back when. Uh, you know, it's always the best of times and worst of times. I just worry that right now, the, the worst of times is, is uh, getting ahead of the best of times. Well, I mean, you look at the last presidential campaign mm. where really all of the Republican candidates repudiated evolution. Well, it's extraordinary. And, and that's, I, I didn't know until I, until I did the research on that, that how quickly that happened, how quickly the, the collapse of the, 
reality-based grown-ups in charge of the Republican Party happened. That, that two, two presidential cycles ago, two-thirds, three-quarters of the candidates, when asked on a debate stage if they believed in, in evolution, said yes. Suddenly, in 2016, Jeb Bush, alone among those 17 people, said, yep, I believe in evolution, although I don't want to push it on anybody, mm -hmm. and it should be taught along with creationism in the schools. That's, that's, that's amazing how, you know, it was, it was gradual, it was gradual, and then suddenly, kaboom, it was required of Republican presidential candidates to say, no, I don't believe in this well-established fundamental part of science. Uh, so when you, when you have situations like that, it's, it's, it's hard to maintain hopeful, despite all of the fantastic, hopeful, great things of, that, are, of course, are still going on in our country. But what about uh, the Wild West? We're nostalgic for the Wild West, where everyone carried a gun. Correct. And say in the uh, 19th century, Buffalo Bill uh, made a fortune because he uh, claimed to be an Indian fighter, and he had a show, a Wild West show. Yeah, playing he, himself. Playing himself. He took it around yeah. the country. People came to see it. They believed yeah. what they saw. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and now uh, everyone has to have a gun. Uh, we're the most armed uh, country in the West. We, we are. There, there are our competitors in, 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 in being as armed as we are are very few and, and not developed nations. No, it is extraordinary. And, and yes, there are actual historical reasons about our development in the frontier and so forth that, that lends a certain mystique and uh, uh, appeal to firearms, but it is way beyond uh, certainly hunting, which a tiny, tiny single digit percentage of Americans now do, beyond any reasonable or realistic sense of self protection. It is a fantasy. I need this semi automatic rifle, or 10 of them, or 20 of them, because why? Because maybe someday we'll need to rise up against the, the you know, the tyrannical government or whatever. It is. So, the most common argument is we need it to protect ourselves against the government, and particularly uh, when Obama was president, because Obama's going to come and take our guns so away. So we need our guns to stop we that. We need to yes. stop that. Yes. No, it, it is, a, in that instance, a, this tautological fantasy. I want my guns. They want my guns. I need to shoot them if they come for my guns. Yes. Yeah. And this is not really uh, exclusively a, a white phenomenon because uh, people like Charles Blow, New York Times, uh, says we had lots of guns in our family. We had in yeah. Louisiana. We needed them because who knows when the, the Ku Klux Klan would come to harass us. Well, and, and, and uh, in, in our recent history, when before the NRA was an a organization of lunatics, uh, in the 1960s and, and early 70s, it was... The, it was the, the people like the Black Panthers who wanted uh, to be able to carry guns in the open and protect themselves. Um, uh, uh, it, it wasn't yet a, 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 uh, uh, an entirely or mainly right-wing um, uh, set of fantasies about resisting uh, the state. Yeah, Rap Brown was prosecuted for uh, carrying a gun across the state line, mm. and he said violence is as American as blueberry pie. Right, uh, right. It's probably right. scary. But now let's get down to Donald Trump. Mm. You have this history and tradition of fantasy, uh, conspiracy theories, longing for uh, uh, the past. How does he fit into all this? Did he tap into it? He did tap into it. And, and although he's not an intellectual. Uh, Is he, he a Christian? Well, he, that's, the, that's the one part of my history that he doesn't conform to. He is, he is not uh, a, a fervently believing Christian. But the, our, our most fervently believing Christians, many of them, the, the Protestant evangelicals, are great supporters of him for a whole set of reasons. What they, what they have in, among the things Well, because they, they in, believe a sinner will lead us into the kingdom of heaven. Well, that's one thing they believe. I don't know that Donald <laughs> Trump puts it quite that way. But they, but they believe, they, they, they are inclined to believe extravagant, unprovable things. And in, in Donald Trump's case, they're not about the imminent return of Jesus Christ, but they have that in common, and they have this, and they have a, 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 a cultural resentment of of the secular elite in common. But but what Donald Trump has, he he, he embodies all the other parts of my theory and my history about uh, wanting to believe the untrue, and the part of it that that really started in the 19th century, where where America invented modern show business and popular culture and, 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 and 
popular culture and entertainment sort of subsumed everything, entertainment, religion, all the rest of our life, all the other parts of life. My question is, are we at peak fantasy land in American history as we sit here today? That is the hope. That is my fond, great hope, is that we are at peak fantasy land and, uh, and, and that the, the, to the degree that Donald Trump embodies that and, and will, will end badly by the consent of a large majority of Americans will perhaps lead us out of this sloth of fantasy land and, and somewhat back to the idea that, eh, maybe the experts have something after all. Maybe we should believe scientists. Maybe, maybe whatever nutty thing I happened to see on the internet last night uh, should not uh, uh, govern how I live my life or how I vote. Exactly. Kurt Anderson, thank you my so great much pleasure. for coming by. Thank you. My great pleasure, and thank you for coming by. Uh, tune in next week for more conversations. I'm Jim Zirin. All the best, and take care.